we tend to use AI and we think of it like it's a thing. It's really software that works, it does very complicated tasks. And using new technologies that involve very powerful computing and advanced mathematics to solve problems that you couldn't solve previously with computers. That's the secretary of the U.S. Air Force at Edwards Air Force Base in California, zipping up his flight suit, preparing his helmet, and even grabbing his little luggage there. Hope he dumped out his water bottle as he prepares to take flight in this experimental F-16 fighter jet. And this thing isn't experimental because it's based on some top secret Beagle doghouse design, or it's part of some new classified boarding group procedure to ward off the gate lice. Our fighter jet here is controlled by artificial intelligence, not a human pilot. This air aircraft uh, and the X-62 has one purpose, which is to advance the state of machine learning. That's a colonel and an Air Force test pilot school commandant, highlighting what the Air Force calls the most potent feature of this craft, VISTA, Variable In-Flight Simulation Test Aircraft, which uses machine learning to take millions of data points from a flight simulator and turn them into actual AI-controlled flights. So on the back there, you can see a component that's a little bit different than what you see on most F-16s. It has there a whole series of computers that are designed to provide it an autonomy sandbox. This aircraft really al allows us to take relatively immature um, machine learning tools and agents and place them airborne. Uh, and to do that in a safe manner. Well, the Associated Press got to witness this safe manner earlier this month, as the Air Force Secretary got inside the F-16 and sped around at more than 550 miles per hour, zipping through the sky with the AI trying to outmaneuver a different human-piloted F-16. Basically, the way we're using the, the artificial intelligence, the automation, is you know we set up a situation uh, for an engagement, if you will, and then we turn the automation on, and we let it control the airplane for some period of time, a minute or two perhaps, during the engagement, and then you turn it back off. And there are a number of safety features that, uh, you know, what altitude we have to be at, how close we can get to the other airplane, where it turns itself off or we would take control away from it. Our secretary here seems pretty calm, cool, and collected about the whole thing. I wasn't terribly worried about the, the risk of the autonomy. And this demonstration marks something of a vote of confidence in the future role that AI could play in air combat. Given the tech that they're working on is bound for a fleet of 1,000 unmanned warplanes set to start operating in 2028, just in time for Avatar 4. We will be able to use these uncrewed aircraft tactically in ways we would not want to use a crewed aircraft. And they're not expendable. We're not throwing them away. We're going to reuse them. That's the intent. But we can let them be attrited. Uh, we can put them in places where some of them are intentionally sacrificed uh, in order to draw fire or to find out where the other side is, find out where the enemy is. Uh, and I think our pilots in general appreciate that that's going to give them a competitive advantage. Now, adopting AI-enabled planes certainly gives our military a number of security and strategic benefits, not to mention cost savings that don't just come from reduced coffee consumption. The computer is not going to get tired. It's not scared. It's going to follow its rules and do as, as close to a perfect maneuvers it can do, uh, whereas the humans are always going to have some variability in how they perform. However, there's always this sticky wicket pointed out by the International Committee of the Red Cross. There are widespread and serious concerns over ceding life and death decisions to sensors and software. After all, autonomous vehicles have enough trouble these days safely taxiing around civilians. And despite GPT-4's assurances that they're just here to provide information and assist with questions, plenty of critics have been sounding the alarm for quite some time that AI tech you know, poses risks for extinction without even asking for our permission first. Of course, our Air Force Secretary claims there will always be human oversight in the system when weapons are used. And at the pace that AI technology is progressing today, the military doesn't seem to want to be caught using economy solutions against business class adversaries. I think we are in a race for technological superiority. This is a feature of that race. It's one of the factors that, that matter. Uh, I think we're competitive but I don't have 100% confidence that we're ahead or certainly not ahead by a, by a large margin. We have to keep running and we have to run fast. I, however, have 100% confidence that if you subscribe to At The News Refresh on YouTube, you'll get more weird and interesting news stories in your feed each and every day. Up, up and away.